Folks, my first guests tonight are a Pulitzer Prize winning biographer and a Grammy Award winning country superstar who've written a new book called Songs of America. Please welcome to The Late Show John Meacham and Tim McGraw. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and thank you for wearing the hat. Well, you know, come on. Do you feel it's my naked? Gig, you do you know? feel naked without that thing? Only when I'm naked. <laughs> That's nice. And I have worn the hat naked before. Oh, I bet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet. Yeah. I bet. I, it's requested by my wife sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it? Faith enjoys that. Yeah, which wants me to pull it low so she can't see my face. Yeah. <laughs> So it could be anybody? <laughs> Do go on. Please, please finish that story. We will get Super Bowl ratings okay. if you just That's finish okay. that story. I, 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 well, think, I think tonight it's off now anyway. Okay, know. good. Yeah. Stephen well, and I, I would have to get ours at Brooks Brothers, so I think this is good. <laughs> right. I think this is good. Brooks Brothers cowboy hats. That's a new line for you. It would yeah. be good. Yeah. Yeah. Would yes. Be good. I actually get my nakedness from Brooks Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> just my skin is pleated. Now, <laughs> Well, you've come together for a very interesting project. Um, it, it's uh, Songs of America, and this is um, patriotism, protest, and the music that made a nation. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's, the, what's the message of this book? What did, what did you learn in creating this, song, this, this book about songs with John? Well, the, the thing that I learned more than anything is there's always hope, and there's always optimism in, in the music that, we, that, we, yeah, that we've heard over the ages and discovered some... We referenced probably 160 songs or so in this book. And you, and you dive back in, and, and all the way to the Liberty Song in 1768, written by one of our founding fathers, John Dickinson, and the, the prescient view that he had of what this country could become and what it could mean to future generations. And, and seeing the arc of the songwriter develop in our country from the earliest times, eight years, 1768, eight years before the Declaration of Independence was written, and seeing how it developed over placing lyrics over existing, usually British melodies yeah. at the time. And exactly. And then how it's... Patriotic plagiarism. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and then yeah. when you get to the songs of the 60s and, and, the, and the protest music and the, and the and our war music and the civil rights movement, and you, and you get to those songs and you start, start seeing a direct correlation back to those original songs. I, I love the idea of patriotic music over British songs. <laughs> like, I forget which one, which, which is the song that is uh, God Save... Uh, God My save, Country Tis of yeah, Thee. My Country Tis, tis of Thee yeah, yeah. is just God Save the Queen. Yeah, <laughs> with our lyrics exactly on it. Exactly right. Yeah. Which is an interesting bird to be flipping. That's at exactly what I yeah. <laughs> The gentlest possible yeah. bird to be flipping. Do you have a, uh, each of you have an earliest patriotic song that you remember? Well, it's funny. Mine is My Country Tis of Thee. I went to an Episcopal day school in the South, and we, if I ever hear, I sing a song of the saints of God and My Country Tis of Thee again. You know, I, I go back to, I'm four years old. And that was incredibly important. We went to chapel five days a week. You know, it was this ambient reality and it was about sweet land of liberty and then when you you take that language how did dr king end the sermon of the march on washington mm -hmm. sweet land of liberty let, let let ring from every mountainside and it's it's a line that goes throughout our our culture and so much of this so much of these ideas are enduring mm -hmm. you know we're, we're at our best when we try to live up to what jefferson wrote that we're all created equal and we don't build monuments to people who build walls and shut doors. We build monuments to people who take them down and open them, right? And, and patriotism and protest are the two wings that enable us to take flight. We celebrate and we also critique. And that's what we're called to do. That's what reason was supposed to do in the arena against passion. And we need more reason now. The reason we're doing this, one of the reasons is we have to find a way to talk to each other. Yeah. And, and not demonize each other. Yeah. And, and, and we don't have to agree all the time, yeah. right? I mean, nine times out of 10, we're, you, the other side, you're gonna think they're wrong and that's fine. But you know, I think America happens when you think on that 10th time, huh, maybe they have kind of a point. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a place we have to get to. Tim, do you, what, do you have a, most, uh, a favorite, like what patriotic song is most beautiful to you? Well, I, I'm a, the, the Battle Hymn of the Republic is something that really moves me, and it, and it takes me back to, gosh, second grade, 
in Rayville, Louisiana growing up, and, and my mom taking me down to the local Methodist church to try out for Winthrop Peru and the Music Man. And they asked me to sing a song, and the song that I knew was my country, to, I mean, a, a battle hymn of the Republic. And, and I sang it, and I got the part of Winthrop Peru. And so it's always been a pretty special there song to me. And there, there it goes. And yeah. here you are. And here I am on your show with, sitting with this guy talking about patriotic songs. It's all been downhill. Yeah. I, <laughs> well, it, it took a left turn somewhere along the way, but I'm trying to correct the ship now. Uh, do either of you think, what is the song that, you you learned about in creation of this book or that you've known your whole life that is most applicable to America today? Oh, wow. What is a patriot, patriotic song that you think that everybody could agree on, that everybody would be moved by and come together around? This may not surprise you coming from two Tennesseans. Me, I'm a native. He had to you know, move up from Louisiana. So... Um, <laughs> He was shocked. They, they let him across the border. Well, they they let me up, yeah. There was electricity, hardback books. They were looking. He's like, yeah. Um, and... See what I have to tolerate here. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> What's this? Water. Um, <laughs> it comes out of a faucet. He really uh, is a nice guy. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think that it's Ragged Old Flag. Yeah. It's Johnny Cash. Uh, sure. Who... And what's great about it is it's sentimental for a while. You know, the flag's been through it. It's been shot. It was went through Shiloh. Then he, he did it in 1974. Mm -hmm. Of course, Nixon's resignation, Vietnam. And he talks about how the flag has been scandalized and disrespected. So you sit there and you think, well, wait, is he talking about the protesters? Or is he talking about the folks who lied us through Vietnam and lied us through Watergate? And the great thing about that song is you can project whichever perspective you are. And one of my big beliefs is that history has the capacity to create a more productive conversation. Absolutely. Because it gives us context, it, it gives us a sense of proportion, and you can open the aperture. Because if you're on the right, you love tradition, allegedly. If you're on the left, you love data and reason. And so history is the one thing that enables us to come together, I think. And, and music has a way of opening those windows to see it in a different light, I think. When you look back at the music that, that's been a part of creating our nation, you know, we tend to look at, at historical figures as something in our past as opposed to looking at people who are struggling in their present. Mm -hmm. And music sort of lets you see what they were thinking at that time, what the population was thinking, what people were thinking, what artists were thinking. And art always drives things forward, I think, in a lot of ways. You are, 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 are well known, if you don't change the subject for a moment, you're well known for showing pictures of yourself with fish <laughs> with no shirt on. <laughs> I just want to share that with the audience. That's, that's yeah. Meacham. That's, that's you want me actually, to? that's not Meacham. That's not Meacham. This is Meacham. Right <laughs> I thought you guys should be even. <laughs> well, listen, Tim, thank he you so much. He wants that picture, though, actually. Oh, we'll send it to him. <laughs> you sign and give it to him. John, so good to see you. The book is <laughs> Songs of America. It's available now. Buy it for the 4th of July. Tim McGraw, everybody, we'll be right back with the star of Men in Black International, Tessa Thompson.